Welcome back, YouTubers, to another SmackDown review of us, the uh, British Frist. Kerching. Mr. Park in here, this guy sitting next to me. The enthusiastic one out of us two, you would think. It's none other than NJ. What's up? And as you can tell, we're definitely here for another SmackDown review. Subscribe above, like this video, and comment your thoughts on this edition of Friday Night SmackDown down in that comment section below. And after watching this SmackDown, if you really want to... Uh, Contact us, please contact us in the description below. Yes, indeed. This uh, SmackDown really isn't, it's not really exactly must see TV right now, is it, NJ? Not really. Do you even ever look forward to watching SmackDown? Not really. Do you ever look forward to doing the reviews? They're quite fun. Their reviews are more funny than the show sometimes, aren't they? Most of the time. And we're probably this review is going to be quite short because we don't really have too much to say about this SmackDown. Imagine if this review was really long, I'd look like a real ass then, wouldn't I? Let's get into this. Yeah, we had no Michael Cole on commentary this week. Instead, it was Josh Matthews and JBL. How do you think them two meshed together on commentary, or did you even really care? Josh Matthews got a centre of attention because without Cole there, it was only him to do most of the talking, and JBL did the filling in. So I guess it was something special for him. I like JBL on commentary. I wish WWE would hire him full time on SmackDown with Michael Cole or something. Uh, we'll get straight to the opener then. The opener was something different. We have Booker T's coming out saying that we're going to find out which is better. The WMD or the Bro Kick. So we have one of them like punching machines that you have like in pubs or sorry or bars or whatever you call them in America. Um, and yeah, I mean, what did you think to this opener? <laughs> it was different, wasn't They're it? They're really trying their hardest to make this feud have something different, kick it off in many ways. They've had the debate, now they're having this. They're really trying to make this a strong feud, have good reason, making Big Show look better than he already does. And I just thought it was different, but just just a way to try and make this feud so that it's not. They're trying to make these two guys not touch each other. Now, while I do primarily agree with that thing, I kind of feel a feud like this, a Big Show and Sheamus feud, should really be about like them brawling and a bit less talking. Do you know what I mean? You've got Big Show as a 500-pound or 450-pound seven-foot giant, and Sheamus is supposed to be this Irish brawler. I just expected that there would be a lot more brawling and stuff in this feud rather than like talking and, and trying to keep them apart. And that's the whole thing. For the, most of this segment, it was all about Big Show not wanting to take part. I just thought, this is ridiculous. Big Show, just get it done, walk out, and that's it. And plus, Big Show had many chances when he got frustrated, to knock out one of these two, but they didn't do it. So I really thought Big Show's part in this was off. Yeah, and uh, you can tell WWE are really trying to protect Sheamus in this one. Uh, so Big Show thinks it's stupid. So do, I guess, a lot of people here in the YWC. I thought it was something a little bit different. It wasn't, like, great or anything, but at least it was something different, which I can always appreciate. Sheamus is still making jokes, and uh, as usual with Sheamus, he can't take the feud seriously. And then the WMD beats the Bro Kick by, what, 400 pounds a square inch? That was... A pretty impressive feat right there, wasn't it? Well, it was like 1,800 as opposed to Sheamus, who was 1,350 or something. Uh, you have Tensai coming out to attack Sheamus, and that leads us on to the next match, which was Tensai versus Sheamus. Um, and this was kind of like your typical Sheamus match, wasn't it? Kind of like five minutes, uh, and then he gets the clean victory. It went down exactly the way you thought it would. Tensai being a guy that would represent Big Show in this match, mm. just so you can show that Big Show can use his... I mean, Sheamus can use his uh, bro, kick. bro kick to take down a big guy. And I just thought this match was quickly done, and it was typical. Yeah. This is your typical Sheamus match, really, wasn't it? He wins clean, he looks strong, which is kind of how you should do it. I wish... Why can't they ever have Big Show just knock Sheamus out or something, like, after a match? I just... Kind of like the Mark Henry Orton booking back in back in you know SmackDown last year. I really enjoyed that booking. Why can't they use the same logic here? It'd make a lot more sense and make Sheamus for once in his life look vulnerable as a babyface. They had many attempts, especially in this opener and the match, to have Big Show at least knock someone out, but they just completely went off it. Santino and Zack Ryder versus Jinder Mahal and Heath Slater. I will have a question here, guys. Um, apparently they're now known as the band now. I do wonder what direction there is for this faction because you have Heath Slater leading it, you have Drew McIntyre and Jinder Mahal dancing, and it just doesn't suit their characters. And it's like, what the what the hell's going on here? This faction has now officially become stupid. Would you not agree? And pointless. And yeah, I mean, they get the victory here, but oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Drew McIntyre, yes, he's gone down. Big slippery slope, but when he's just stood there, his might work okay. But the fact that he signed with Heath, that was horrible. And Jinder, a sign that could have been a big heel, you know, if they booked him correctly. You see him doing all this rock star stuff. It was absolutely ridiculous. The match was stupid, and I really thought, I'm glad it's finished. Move them on. 
but I really want to know what direction they're going to move this stupid band in and what's the <laughs> point of making them together. And uh, the Dude, fact that Heath Slater is the lead singer of this band is, really is kind of stupid. Um, <laughs> you had Kane versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, apparently, this this match was made over tout and Jade. This, apparently, Ziggler challenged Kane over tout. Do you think Kane ever watches tout? No, I don't think he does. No, okay. Um, this, okay, can you be quiet for a minute, please? I'm trying to analyze this, NJ. I'm, I'm trying to make the best out of a bad situation here. Um, so the crowd were pretty much torn between Dolph Ziggler and Kane. Um, and do you, I think the main question here is because I didn't really care about this match too much, but with Ziggler not in a feud right now, do you think they're going to make him cash at Hell in a Cell? I think that they've kind of made it kind of obvious they are going to now, so they would have given Ziggler a feud already. The fact they put in Sheamus up against a big guy at the Big Show, the Big Show can, mm. they book him correctly, use a lot of destruction on Sheamus, really not Sheamus out. And, and the Hell in a Cell fact as well, even though they're not really going to use it that much, will build up to a perfect chance for Ziggler to take advantage and become the champion. But the thing about this I want to quickly say is that Kane is going up against a main eventerish guy, or someone Ooh. who should be in the main event for yeah. what his standard is. So I'll give it that. It's just that I, I really think in this, Zig was a little bit sloppy in some oh, areas. There was a couple of sloppy moments in this one. But I'd say it was a match that I wanted to see because of Kane factor. The Kane factor is what does it all in your mind, isn't it, NJ? It's like anything Triple H you have to watch. Yeah. Um. The match ends when Ziggler hits Kane with the brief coast. So Kane officially got a DQ victory. And then you have Daniel Bryan coming out to help Kane. And they go arguing in the ring. You have Matt Stryker coming in, trying to stir shit between them, saying, I don't know, I can't remember what they were saying. Well, he definitely picked on uh, Daniel Bryan, and you're the weakest thing out of the two. Ooh. And I thought, ooh. ooh. And plus, to be honest, for you Daniel Bryan fans, yeah, look at his title run and how quick that went down and how bad that went. 18 <laughs> seconds finish. Yeah, so maybe there's some truth there. He may be the weak link, but out of the two, how are the two, who would you say has been more entertaining in this anger management storyline? Has it been Daniel Bryan with his yes, yes, yes thing? Or has it been Kane simply because of the fact that this goes against what most of his character is all about? Which do you think has been more entertaining in this view? Because I honestly can't really pick between the two. I think they've both been incredibly entertaining in this very unique story. Our, our entertain wise, Daniel Bryan bores me. I really don't like Daniel Bryan. Kane's character, as much as I'm really against what they're doing with Kane right now, the fact they're having him doing this, and the fact that he, you see him doing stuff that you don't normally see him do, even though they're trying to keep the monster image with him, I say it's Kane. Yeah, I mean, that, that is that is the reason why, because it just goes against his character so much. That's why it's been so entertaining. Um, And also, Matt Striker gets no locked in chokeslammed. And yeah, we'll move on. Kofi Kingston versus Big Show. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it was more that in this one. That's British Fist, what am I talking about? Um, So you have Kofi Kingston versus Big Show with Miz on commentary. Now, um, apparently Miz and Kofi Kingston are having an IC title match on main event next week. Um. Why are, why are they giving away a pay-per-view match on a, on a sort of third-rate show? I know they're trying to start it off strong, but I thought they were going to have a match at the pay-per-view. They probably will as well. Yeah, and I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, so you have Kobe Kingston going up against the number one contender for the World of Weight Championship. I'm not sure why you could have just given Kobe Kingston a jobber or something. Why do they have to do this whole Kobe Kingston versus Big Show, Superstar versus Superstar thing? I mean, Big Show, knock knocks, out. There we go. Big show knocks Kofi out to get the victory. Miz gets on the mic afterwards saying that Kofi... Kingston always comes up short. So, yeah, I'm not going to be watching that match. On and that's event. the thing. They go past the match, which you expect, even though Kobe did put on somewhat of a good performance. You have Miz and Mike, which obviously you do like Miz and Mike. He does stand up what he believes in and really puts down Kofi. But what direction they're going with this feud, we'll have to see after Wednesday. I imagine they'll do it on the pay-per-view. Maybe have an unclean victory, a main event, have it on the pay-per-view. Don't know. Uh, Sinkara versus Damian Sandow. This is kind of like a, a hyping up the the tag tournament semi finals match, and uh, it's pretty. The lights pretty good in there, isn't it? But I don't understand why they still have the lights of Sinkara. Really, to be honest, I mean it's been so long now. It does it really make him stand out that much now? We've seen him for like, over a year. The lights again. I don't think they're because of how um, Sinkara is anymore. I think it's just for the factor of making it so different for Sinkara. Gives Sinkara something different for his matches. But the lights go back to normal as soon as the match is over. Pretty much as it should. And I guess the thing with this segment is I don't mind them trying to make Sinkara look good, but um, Sin basically Sinkara wins the match and then goes on top of the two heels without even Rey Mysterio even being there. So. Do you know what I mean? Why why, why would I be hyped up for that match when I've just seen Sankara take out the tag team that they're going to be facing well, with Ray? They're really trying their hardest here, I'm saying, to make uh, Sankara look like a strong competitor, mm. make him look good. He's been, managed to take down two wrestlers 
in a match and obviously get the win, which doesn't really do much for Sandow because he's lost the match now. To he Sankara. was shocked, wasn't he? He was oh, shocked. Yeah. He was like, oh! And it's nice to see a, an actual legit reaction from a guy like Sandow that he actually, most people would just like brush it off, but Sandow was actually really like, oh, holy shit. But anyway, we move on to the main event segment. Uh, are, you, are you looking forward to that tag match on on Raw the, for the finals of the Tag Team Championship? I think the fact that it's more than just a two-on-two. Two. They've mm. got six wrestlers. They've got good performers there. And who knows what the outcome is. Because after the main event, something happens which there used to be a ruling for. So we'll have to definitely see how it turns out. Okay, Del Rio versus Daniel Bryan was our main event of the evening. This sure as hell didn't feel like the main event. I know Randy Orton was supposed to be returning on this show, but it didn't really feel... I guess the main event was the promise segment afterwards, but... You know, throughout the night they did hype this up by having like Ricardo looking for Orton, the little comedy segment with Santino and Ricardo, and then a one with Hornswoggle. But they did hype this up throughout the yeah. night, so it makes sense having this as the main event because of the Orton thing. But the thing is, you've had the world title, the world champion in the opener, the challenger. It's just not in the right place, but again, with Orton there, being the top wrestler still, he would get the main event. Especially when he's re apparently returning to SmackDown from the, from I don't know, from the injury or from filming a Marine, another film or something, I don't really know. Del Rio beats Daniel Bryan clean. No real surprise, really. You want to make this guy's higher on the card than Daniel Bryan, so you want to make him look stronger with a clean victory. Del Rio then gets on the mic saying that Orton won't be here because he's injured, and then he mocks Randy Orton, <laughs> which it's, it's just funny to see the guy as one-dimensional as Del Rio mocking a guy who's even more one-dimensional than and, Randy Orton. And then he just the Orton knuckled down, yeah. and then he looks face-to-face -face with a little girl. Yeah, oh, that, oh yeah, little girl. And I, I thought that, I thought actually that it was really well shot, wasn't it? Because you had, you, had, you had Del Rio sort of like doing the vibe thing, going down, and all of a sudden you see them two facing off in the same vibe position. I thought that was really, really well filmed. And whoever was behind the production of that deserves a raise, in my opinion. But that was that was very well presented. Um, and then they have the traditional brawl, the traditional Randy Orton triumphant return brawl where Del Rio escapes and Orton RKO's Ricardo Rodriguez on the announcer's table, which does not break. Probably because JBL was there and it's like, nah, this ain't breaking, bitch. What do you think to this? <laughs> the finish, again, they're doing what they can to make Orton look strong. So maybe unlikely that Del Rio will finally get a win over Orton. But like, the way they've done it, it's just giving Orton a big welcome back. Pretty much what it was designed to do, really. And I guess these two will be having a match at the pay-per-view. So, yeah, I mean, it was an effective segment to hype up that. You didn't really have them touch too much. So... Yeah, they'll, have a, they'll be having a match at Hen in the Cell, I guess. What are your overall thoughts on this edition of SmackDown, then? Skip too much of it, or most of it, if not all of it. So that basically says that, yeah. yes, they have this... Oh, yeah, they also did this Divas thing with the hair thing. Oh, that fuck was that. stupid. But overall, it weren't the best SmackDown, even though most of the segments, if not all, led to a match coming down the line. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it was your typical SmackDown, really, essentially, wasn't it? I mean, it, it, judging by the amount we skipped, and it's our new stance we're taking, we just don't want to be, you just we don't want to watch segments sometimes that we don't care about. And we just skip. we skipped a lot of this SmackDown, and it, I think you could tell we did in this review as well sometimes, but hell, at least we had fun doing the review, NJ! That's all I can say. Put your thoughts and comments down in that comment section below on this week's edition of SmackDown, and that is... Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do the outro because this is the man that always does the outros. Go ahead, NJ. From Mr. Parkin and me, NJ, hopefully you can enjoy this Smackdown. So please give me the good, the bad and the ugly. Until next time, YouTubers, goodbye.